Intel Core i5-11600K, so that's 11th gen and Rocket Lake. The big news with Intel Core i9-11900K, the i9 Rocket Lake, is that unlike Comet Lake S, we've dropped from 10 cores back to 8. I'm covering that in a separate review. I've also covered that in previous videos. Hopefully the editor's going to put a link somewhere to guide you. So with the i9, we've got a core count drop. The i7 remains at eight cores, and the i9 gains some new clever technology, Intel Adaptive Boost. None of that applies to the i5. The i5 in 10th gen was six cores with 12 threads, and it is still six cores with 12 threads. However, the architecture is completely different. The graphics are completely different. It's different. It has the same LGA 1200 socket as 10th gen. It can be uh, put in an old Z490 motherboard. However, if you put it in a Z590 motherboard, you can take advantage of the new support for PCI Express Gen 4. So it's a completely different processor and it's priced at the launch price of the previous i5 10600K, 249, 250 pounds here in the UK. The uh, old or existing i5 10600K has subsequently dropped to about 220. So price flat, uh, we've got the same socket compatibility, we've gained PCI Express Gen 4, we've got new cores, we've got new graphics. There's a lot to get into. The system I'm using for this review consists of an Intel Core i5-11600K. The motherboard is a mighty gigabyte Z490 Aorus Master. The BIOS on that is F5A. We've got 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3600MHz. Graphics card is a Sapphire RX 6800 XT with 16 gigabytes of memory. Storage is a Sabrent Rocket 4.0. The cooler is a mighty MSI MPG Core Liquid KL360. That's Ace Tech 7th Gen. We have a Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watt power supply and we're running on Windows 10 Pro. The theory says that this new Core i5 is a completely different beast to the 10th gen Core i5. So let's see how the 11th gen Core i5 compares to 10th gen Core i5, and also, and this is the key thing, how it compares to AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. In the CPU test for 3D Mark Time Spy, Rocket Lake does well. It's a significant increase on 10th gen, and it beats AMD. 7-zip compressing, 11th gen beats 10th gen, however AMD retains the win. 7-zip decompressing, it's the same story, except here the gap between AMD and Intel is even larger. Memory bandwidth, now this is a peculiar one. ADA64 is obviously a synthetic test, and Intel Core i5-11600K tops the chart. In this roundup it beats absolutely everything. In memory copying, the i5 is in the middle of the chart, but the important point here is it beats the 10th gen part and it beats AMD. Blender Classroom. Now we know this is a true CPU test and the results are not too shocking. The 11th gen Core i5 beats the 10th gen but loses out to AMD. Cinebench R15, so this is the relatively old and crusty version. 11th gen beats 10th gen, loses to AMD. In Cinebench R15 single core, the new Rocket Lake comes close to AMD, but is beaten. Then we step up to Cinebench R23. This is the brand new version of Cinebench. And here you'll see that in the multi-core, once again, Rocket Lake loses out to AMD but comprehensively beats the old Comet Lake S. The single core test of Cinebench R23, just look how close Intel gets to AMD. I think we can say one point is as close to a tie as you can get. Power draw for the CPU. AMD Ryzen 5 tops the chart, i.e. it has the lowest power draw, 105 watts for the CPU. Rocket Lake closes the gap slightly, it's 140 watts, where the old Comet Lake S is 150 watts. It looks as though Rocket Lake's architecture is slightly more efficient than Comet Lake's. Temperature. Hurrah! It's a win for Rocket Lake, a mere 55 degrees, albeit I've got this enormous Ace Tech 7th Gen cooler slapped on it, so we are giving it just an ungodly amount of cooling. 
you may choose to put this cooler on your Core i5, in which case good luck to you. This is a best case scenario. Nonetheless, Intel tops the chart. And then we look at Handbrake. In H.264 encoding, the Rocket Lake beats Comet Lake by a decent margin. However, they're right down the bottom of the charts as a pair, and they're both behind the Ryzen 5. In H.265 encoding, it's the same story. Rocket Lake beats Comet Lake, loses to AMD. And then we move on to gaming. Deus Ex Mankind Divided at 4K. The Rocket Lake does really well. This is obviously a test that's at 4K, therefore the graphics card is of most importance, but the i5 is right up there. At 1440p, the results look more predictable, but where the old Comet Lake S Core i5 was right down the bottom of the chart, now the Rocket Lake gains a decent number of frames per second. The average has increased by 10, and the CPU is now heading towards the middle of the chart, but it is just beaten by AMD. 1080p, same story, Intel cannot quite take the fight to AMD. Far Cry 5 New Dawn, so once again 4K, it's all down to graphics, the processors play a very small part. At 1440p, Intel towards the bottom of the chart, AMD Ryzen 5 slightly higher, but the difference in frames very small. At 1080p in Far Cry 5 New Dawn, Rocket Lake moves up the chart. It beats the Ryzen 5 by a reasonable number of frames. Watch Dogs Legion at 4K. Again, it's all down to graphics, so the chart is pretty much a dead heat across the piece, but the Core i5 does perfectly okay. At 1440p, the CPUs are pretty much tied in a dead heat, so the fact that the Rocket Lake is down the bottom of the chart doesn't really tell us much. And it's a similar story at 1080p. A couple of frames per second separate the entire field. And there we have it. Judging by the charts, there's no denying that this is a better processor than its older brother. However, if I was to tell you that this was a slightly tweaked Comet Lake S, they'd change the process very slightly or something like that, you'd believe me. Telling you that it's a brand new processor and carries over, as far as we can see, almost nothing from the previous processor, the figures simply don't bear that out. You will have noted that I haven't even mentioned overclocking. Couple of reasons for that. For one thing, the new processor runs at the same speed as the old processor, 4.6 GHz all cores. There is a very slight bump in single core speed, 4.9 against 4.8. The speeds, however, are comparable to the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is 4.65 GHz all cores. So we are comparing apples with apples. You can overclock the Ryzen by a couple of hundred megahertz. You'll be able to overclock the Intel by something approaching the same, but Intel's already taking substantially more power than AMD. If you want to overclock either processor, you're going to get about the same result. It's a very few percentage points improvement. Should you buy the new Core i5-11600K? Honestly, I cannot think of a reason not to. If you're in the market for a six core processor for reasonable money and a motherboard to go with, I don't see any reason to not choose Intel plus a preferably budget motherboard, but 200 pounds or so, maybe less. Uh, rather than the Ryzen 5 and B550 combo. We like the Ryzen 5, we like B550, it's really good. It's not particularly cheap. In many games, particularly if you've got a decent graphics card, the processor plays less of a part. You're into fast storage. And now that Intel supports PCI Express Gen 4, as does AMD and AMD has done for ages, provided you have a fast SSD, I suspect you will struggle to see much difference between this system and the Ryzen 5 on a B550 with a decent SSD and decent memory. They are really that close. It's a very pleasing state of affairs. Finally, Intel has caught up with Ryzen 5. Well done, chaps. Good work.